plumbing with a face mask. There we go. Man, I'm sorry, when things aren't green, it really messes me up. Face mask. Are you a plumber? If you're out doing plumbing and you're not wearing a face mask, you've got to ask yourself, are you setting yourself up for trouble? Plumbing is bad enough as it is. We're around lots of diseases and the possibility of it because of the pops that we deal with each and every day. What are you doing for safety? Hopefully, you're wearing safety glasses. Hopefully you're wearing gloves. Hopefully you've got work boots on, you got long pants, you got long sleeves, you're taking care of yourself. And man, it's getting foggy in here, so I'm gonna take those down, but that's part of the problem with a mask. Think about it. I can see very clearly now, but as soon as I put this on and start talking, if you got the mask on properly, that hot air is coming up and I'm full of hot air. The hot air comes up and now my glasses are fogged up so bad, I can't hardly see. So what happens then? A plumber pulls them up and works this way. So for this video, I'm gonna take them off. But I want to talk to you about the masks. These are some of the very first masks that I ordered because a friend of mine, Winnie Sun from Irvine, California, actually sent me a text message one day and said, look, the coronavirus is on the way. I've got friends that are trying to buy face masks. I found some on Amazon here and I jumped in and ordered some. And I'm glad she called. These said that they were N95 masks. And don't get me wrong, what they are, they're a piece of cloth. And I got a stack of them, 10 of them. And it says refillable. But what I got were these filters. The funny thing is, there's nowhere here to change out a filter. There's nowhere to put a filter in. Are you supposed to wear two of these? Because I'm telling you what, wearing one of these is hard to breathe. When you go to the store and they say face masks are required or masks are required, what are people wearing? This is just a little thin polyester type piece of cloth that stretches a little bit. And I actually stretch them out so they don't pull on my ears too bad. But when you put them on, and remember, I know how to put them on properly because I've been through the training. Not for a mask like this, and is this a one strap or two strap? The reason I ask that, I'm used to these masks. Now this is actually just a dust mask. Now this is not an N95. This is a dust mask that you do not need any training for. A dust mask is something you can buy at the hardware store. It's something to keep the little particles out of your nose while you're in there working, while you're around your house working. A dust mask is great. It is supposed to do just that. It is supposed to keep the dust out of your mouth, out of your nose. You're trying to keep it out of your respiratory system. This starts getting into a full-blown respirator. Here's the problem. Legally, you're supposed to have training to wear a respirator. You're actually supposed to get fitted for it and you're supposed to have facial hair away from areas that it may seal off. So there's a lot of things that you have to do, but also you're supposed to do a respiratory test. The reason being, you get these on, it gets hard to breathe. Now me, I've had asthma before. I think it's really just a food allergy, but I have been diagnosed with asthma. And I gotta tell you, keeping this mask on right now and talking as much as I am, it's making me suck air. It gets harder to breathe. That is the whole reason that you have to do the respiratory test. They wanna make sure that you wearing a mask, you putting a mask on or a respirator and trying to work in someone's house is not gonna harm you. I gotta tell you, I see people driving down the road with masks on and I'm asking myself, what the what? I mean, seriously, come on, you're in your car by yourself. Don't you think if you're around somebody, you've either already got it or I don't know, maybe you think it's in the car. Maybe the fly that flew in your window has it and it's flying around. I don't know, but here's the deal. Guys, it's hard enough to breathe as it is with these things on. When you're in the car, take it off, breathe. There are people that are having problems, respiratory problems, because they're not getting enough oxygen. You need oxygen to go to your brain and think. When you're around other people, when you're out in public, as a plumber, man, think about it. If you're walking in the supply house, if you're walking into a box store, if that's where you're getting supplies, and if you are, oh my God, you are paying for it. But anyway, back to the real point, masks. You need to wear them to take care of not only your customers and you, but what about your family? If you go home at night and you have been in contact with somebody with COVID or any kind of virus like that, you're gonna pass it on. And it goes to more than masks. Remember, I started off saying, look, wear your safety glasses, wear gloves. I saw a test online the other day where somebody said, look, flushing a toilet puts those particles up in the air, puts the water molecules up in the air. The World Health Organization has discovered that in Hong Kong, people doing their own plumbing or handyman type people were actually cutting open vents, not tying them back in, and that was actually letting the particles spread through a high rise building. Guys, look, we're plumbers. And say you've got a tub that hadn't been used in a while. Your P-trap's dry. The bathroom smells like plumbing, 
and a neighbor has COVID, a neighbor flushes a toilet, gets those water particles in the air, and to vent out, it comes up through your sewer. Here in Texas, we don't have building traps, so there's nothing isolating the sewer from the building itself. So it is possible for those particles, those viruses, to spread from house to house just by coming through the sewer and venting out. Is it probable? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you, I'm smart enough to understand the plumbing system and know what it can do. If you're a plumber, if you're an apprentice, if you're in the trades and you are working around anybody that possibly has the virus, and I've got to tell you, if you do work for a plumbing company, is your company pre-qualifying the calls? Because when we call people or when people call us, we ask them, has anybody in your house been diagnosed with the virus? Has anybody been quarantined, isolated, running fever, coughing, anything at all? <coughs> oh, <coughs> sorry about that. Anyway, when we call them and tell them we, we're on the way, we ask them, hey, again, has anybody been quarantined, isolated, having problems? Has anybody been diagnosed with COVID? When our plumbers get there, we talk to them. Our plumbers know we've already asked them if everything's okay. But when we get there, we're wearing masks, we're wearing safety glasses, we're wearing gloves, we're wearing the things to protect us, and we're wearing the things to protect our families. Think about it, guys. If you're working under a house on a sewer line, make sure you've got a mask on, preferably a good one, a respirator that's gonna help keep things out. Unfortunately, we really don't know how this virus is spread. So do everything you can to take care of you, take care of your customers, and take care of your family. If y'all know anybody that's had the virus and you know how they got it or, or maybe you know who they were around, do me a favor. Leave a comment down below and tell me, do they wear masks? Because I know plumbers that don't. I know plumbers are like, look, if the customer doesn't want me to, I'm not wearing them. Leave me a comment down below and let me know, are they, did they, and are you? I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. And most of all, we don't know how long this is gonna last, so stock up on masks and get ready. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.